If you don't have it, you're gonna be in a bad situation. Bitcoin is going to 10 million. If you don't have Bitcoin, you are poor. 2020, when MicroStrategy bought uh, the, the first Bitcoin, most, if not all, of the companies it didn't exist. You know, it was not in their uh, realm of uh, possibility. And now it's starting to creep in a little bit. Microsoft might buy some. We are pushing Bitcoin on the global balance sheet of the world's corporations. The existence of Bitcoin prevent them from doing permanent and deficits. There is no marketing CEO and we have the best marketing ever. Investing in the stock market is more like a gamble and also it, it's barely keeping up with uh, inflation. There is everything red. <laughs> everything is going down against Bitcoin. Most of the company in the index were actually uh, burning capital. MicroStrategy outperformed every single S&P 500 stock since they adopted the Bitcoin standard. The Swiss uh, Central Bank bought some uh, Micro strategy uh, stocks. January 2020 average house price in America was 45 Bitcoin. And now we're down to six Bitcoin. So in France today, we are uh, in, uh, uh, they are starting to vote uh, the budget in the parliament. And uh, obviously, with all of these uh, political talks, people are talking about uh, making sure that uh, everyone have uh, have jobs and work and stuff like that. And that made me think about the fact that actually, maybe uh, the, the the goal, the ultimate goal of humanity is not to work twenty four seven, you know, but more uh, to to have a, a freedom to work if you want to work, uh, but also have the freedom to do uh, some other things, and uh, it might be linked to uh, Bitcoin and also uh, inflation uh, sub topics. So that made me think about that as well. Uh, really cool. Uh, let's, let's just start with, with, with that end there. It's really cool. Uh, so they are, they, are, they are voting for uh, what exactly in, in France? So, um, so I don't know if you, if you heard about that, but we had a recent uh, election uh, in, the, like in, in, the, in the summer to basically uh, elect, a, choose a new government. So elect a new parliament and then after that choose a new government and the government has been chosen uh, uh, in, in the beginning of this of September if I if I remember correctly and so now the parliament is uh, voting the annual budget for the state and one of the key points of this uh, budget one of the key uh, uh, goal of this budget is to uh, reduce the government uh, deficits because I think today we are about like 5% of uh, GDP, something like that. And the goal is obviously to bring it down. And so there, there, is a, there are a lot of uh, talks about that. Uh, and um, the thing is that in France, in, in our new parliament, there is no uh, strong majority. So it's like a one third, basically. One third is uh, left, one third is more uh, center, and one third is more uh, right uh, leaning party. And basically, they are all debating uh, about the budget. Obviously, they have different ideas. For example, on the left, they want to tax more. On the right, they tend to want to reduce uh, spending, uh, which is I mean, that's a personal opinion, but in France, we have a pretty high uh, spending. I think the government is like, government spending is like 60% 60, 60 of, uh, of uh, GDP or something like that. I mean, we, the government is quite huge in, uh, in France. Uh, and so there are all these uh, ideas uh, coming up. And uh, obviously, uh, when you talk about uh, taxation and taxing, uh, it kind of become really... Uh, hairy uh, really really fast and so yeah these are the some kind of, uh, of talks they are, they are talking about and talking about taxation i've seen and uh, that's also made me think about this like new um uh ecb um, report or paper that i've seen uh, uh i think they, they released it like at the beginning of the week and basically they are saying in this new paper that uh Bitcoin, if it reaches a high enough uh, market cap and, uh, and a high price, so for example, they are talking about 10 million euros per Bitcoin in this report, uh, it will have negative effects on, the, on, the, um, uh, on, on society. And to, uh, to uh, prevent that, uh, government should uh, aim at uh, taxing uh, Bitcoin uh, uh, really uh, heavily 
uh, if not uh, prevent it from, uh, from I mean, uh, ban it uh, altogether. Uh, and there, there has been a, a similar uh, report from the Fed in the US talking about similar things. Basically, they said that uh, the existence of Bitcoin prevent them from doing uh, permanent deficits. So all of that is kind of linked, you know. So I don't know if it's like just random or if there are some uh, ties uh, between all of that. But that that made me, I mean, I, I, I that made me think a bit about all of that. And I, I found it a bit, uh, in a way, funny, but in a way, worrisome also, because I feel like we are entering into the then they fight you uh, phase, uh, trying to uh, basically uh, fight Bitcoin again. Uh, because, for example, talking about the, um, the European Central Bank, they, they have talked multiple times about Bitcoin and published uh, papers and reports and whatnot. But until that point, all of these reports, they were like, oh, Bitcoin is, Bitcoin is dead or Bitcoin is a speculative bubble, Bitcoin is going to die, Bitcoin, Bitcoin, whatever. And now... It's kind of a shift because they say Bitcoin might might uh, like live on, but uh, if you don't have it, uh, you're gonna be uh, in in a bad situation. So uh, you should uh, uh, vote to tax it, which is kind of crazy when you think about it because basically they they say uh, if you don't have it, uh, you're gonna be poorer in a way, and. Their, their solution is not then you should buy some or uh, in, ca it, in case it catches them as uh, the famous uh, quote uh, says it but they say if you don't have it basically if you are a no coiner uh, you should um, uh, vote for uh, for a policy that will uh, increase taxes on it and basically uh, try to uh, tax it out of existence which I find it crazy in uh, like philosophy philosophically speaking you know it, it's so it's so crazy for me that like first of all the central bank is saying a lot of things like if you break it down first of all they're saying like oh yeah bitcoin is going to 10 million uh they're saying if you don't have bitcoin uh, you are poor uh and uh, you better vote for a socialist party that at least uh, is getting some taxes in uh and and then what we also get what you also uh, pointed at is like the central banks are working together and now they're really trying to fight bitcoin like we are definitely already in the fighting stage maybe even small maybe in some parts even like in the joining stage when we think about blackrock uh they they are definitely <laughs> <laughs> joining bitcoin they're very likely to do it so like uh it's an it's in a very interesting time we're living in that that that's the thing and what makes it even more interesting is that uh we we, we see both uh both things basically we see like from central banks some some governments and some central banks trying to again attack it tax it whatever then we see also As you mentioned it, BlackRock and uh, some other companies, MicroStrategy uh, in the in the US, uh, really involved in it, investing in it. I also heard recently, I think today, that uh, Microsoft might again, uh, it's not uh, done yet, but might buy some. Uh, they 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 want to uh, have a, they, they have a proposal to be voted by their shareholder uh, early December. He, like basically, should we buy some? Uh, Do, do something like micro strategy, for example. So you have this kind of more, I, I would say, bullish trends and people try to uh, starting to understand it and adopt it. And on the other side, you have some states, some central banks and some, again, people, I guess, also more broadly that uh, are still, I feel like... Um, They, they they want to 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 break it to uh, to attack it, but I don't really understand to be honest the 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 the, the, the rational reason for that. I feel like it's more again uh, because it doesn't fit their I don't I don't know their their worldview or uh, they don't really understand it or uh, just just because. Uh, and so you have these two kind of camps that starts to to form, and uh, and I find I find it. Uh, I, interesting but in a way also uh, depending on which side will uh, win uh, it might have some uh, different uh, consequences but that's that's funny to see how actually uh, again not everyone is 
uh, not everyone agrees on uh, on the same uh, on, on the same concept you know uh, like bitcoin it's 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 here it exists uh, it uh, it's like it's like math you know and there is no uh, interpretation about that or whatever but then you have two different uh, sides that see it uh, differently some people see it as hope as a, a as an innovation as something good for the future and then you have some other people that's that uh, see it as a negative uh, thing like basically if it continues to uh, prosper uh, it will be the end of the world that's kind of crazy to me that that's so uh interesting as you also brought up the microsoft thing i think that's something that's a case study that it's so interesting because that that didn't came up from microsoft itself it came up from one shareholder uh that uh, proposed that uh, in the annual meeting and this is super interesting because this one proposal forces microsoft to put a stance uh, in there the, yeah. They have to have a position now on that. And the board decided uh, to recommend to vote no, which is super interesting because now Microsoft has an official position on Bitcoin. They're saying no to it. And now we have this timestamp where Microsoft said no. I mean, it's still voted on. Like in December 9, uh, this proposal will be voted on. <laughs> but I guess as the board uh, sa said no, I guess yeah. it will not be voted yes. So for everyone that is thinking now Microsoft will buy Bitcoin, likely not. <laughs> likely not, likely not, not now. But at least, yeah, as you said, it's like a first step. Uh, and at least they are starting to uh, think about it. And it starts to uh, yeah become real in a way. Uh, whereas... Uh, up until then, or at least up until uh, 2020, when MicroStrategy bought uh, the, the first Bitcoin, I think m most, if not all, of the companies for them it was like uh, it, it didn't exist. You know, it was not in their uh, in their realm of uh, possibility. And now it's starting to creep in a little bit. They are starting to have uh, to uh, think about it at least. Maybe they will probably vote no this time. But who knows? Maybe in one year, two years, uh, someone else will will come and see uh, you and, and tell them, see, uh, we, you, you could have bought uh, two years ago. Uh, now it's up uh, 400%. Uh, so maybe we should uh, get some in case it cashes on and, uh, and, and we, and, and it starts to, to, to wall, but at least, uh, yeah. Absolutely. And it, it could be like, it, it's super interesting how through that grassroots movements, through regular investors uh, and through people that are really interested in, we are kind of um, so loud now that the big companies have to discuss Bitcoin. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, it's, it's not a non-discussion anymore, like because BlackRock and MicroStrategy and Tesla are the kind of the, 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 the work, but then there's like 100 other publicly traded companies or maybe not 100, maybe 50 or something like that. I don't know what the exact numbers of publicly traded companies that have now Bitcoin on the balance sheet. And now the big company, Microsoft, and I can guarantee you, Apple is talking about it. Apple probably has like five employees who is researching Bitcoin. I don't know, but they I, probably yeah, have I like... Tim, uh, Tim Cook said in one interview, I mean, a couple of years ago, that he had he has uh, Bitcoin uh, personally. Uh, and I think I heard... Uh, uh, I, I, I might need to check that. But I heard that uh, uh, the, the, the Bitcoin white paper had had been shipped into uh, uh, one of uh, macOS uh, releases like uh, the you you had the bit the beacon white paper someone in the file system of the mac uh, that's actually as true a, uh, as i, I checked that so yeah it's, that that was actually on the mac you uh, could find it in the mac systems and if you go to that and like every Mac at some point had the Bitcoin white paper on there, um, but they deleted it after right. it got uh, really famous. Uh, they, they, they canceled it out. So right now it's no longer there. Uh, it was probably just a motivated employee who yeah, <laughs> probably hit the file uh, quite good. <laughs> but it's really interesting. I, I, lo I love to talk about uh, how Bitcoin is creeping into the the corporate uh, strategy like we we are uh pushing bitcoin on the global balance sheet of the world's corporations like how amazing is that 
that's pretty interesting indeed. And not only a corporation, but it's also a governance that are uh, starting to get their uh, feet wet with uh, Bitcoin. I mean, obviously, there is uh, El Salvador. There is a uh, Bhutan that is uh, started that is uh, mining Bitcoin for now quite a while, I think. Some um, uh, Middle Eastern uh, countries are also uh, starting to at least think about it because they have some excess in energy and so they want to uh, to uh, put some uh, Bitcoin mining to uh, to uh, get some uh, so, some money or at least not lose not waste the energy the, the excess energy that, that, that they have. Uh, I heard a similar thing about one country in uh, South uh, South America uh, that has a huge um, hydro hydroelectric uh, uh, dam. A water dam and same thing they have a, a huge excess of uh, electricity and so they were thinking about uh, putting some uh, some mining there there is also a famous story at least in the french uh, bitcoin uh, ecosystem about uh, congo the uh, Virung virunga park it's like a, a natural reserve in uh, in uh, congo um, that uh, I, th I think two or three years ago uh, um, uh, put some uh, Bitcoin uh, mines, some Bitcoin mining in, in the park uh, because they have, again, uh, some uh, small uh, dams in the, in, in, in the rivers in the park in order to uh, bring electricity to the, to the population of the park uh, so that they don't have to uh, chop wood and burn wood, which uh, first is bad for the forest, the, which is, again, a national park, and also bad for the envir environment because if you burn wood, it uh, produces a lot of uh, CO2 emissions. Uh, so there are, you, you can see all of this big or small um, uh, incursion of Bitcoin in multiple places around the world, and I again find it uh, fascinating because it's it's really the essence, you know, of the of, of a decentralized system. There is no like uh, one master uh, government uh, in the world that says to everyone uh, around the globe, now you will use Bitcoin for that. It's just that people naturally they try to find solutions for their uh, different problems and uh, depending on their problem, they will uh, pick uh, Bitcoin, uh, Bitcoin mining or Bitcoin as a currency or, uh, or something else to solve their, uh, their individual problem. And I find, find it really, uh, really interesting. I, I love that a lot. Yeah, that we, we like, there is no marketing CEO and we have, the best marketing ever, like the Bitcoin marketing, there's nothing better than that. No company has so many podcasts around their product as, as, as Bitcoin has. Like it's, it's fascinating to see how effective and great the Bitcoin marketing team is, how professional we are and how closely we are also kind of working together, even though um, there is nobody organizing us. Like there, there, there is nobody that is like, oh yeah, like Robin, now you have to take the podcast out there and he's doing that. It's, it's weird. We are all doing what's best for Bitcoin and Bitcoin, Bitcoin shows out what's the power of aligning as incentives is. That, that's a great power, I feel like from Bitcoin and we see it already with Bitcoiners. And the, the, the great thing about uh, about all of that is that also it brings together people around a, a single topic, but people who have uh, different, again, worldviews, different experiences, different, they come from different backgrounds. They might be interested in different things in, I don't know, politics or, uh, or uh, work or uh, whatever. But all of these uh, people with all of the, their, their differences, they come, uh, they come along, along uh, behind a single project, a single idea, because basically Bitcoin is, to me, I like to say Bitcoin is an idea, you know, first it's like the idea of uh, sound money and of, again, uh, freedom and, uh, and, and, and much uh, more, uh, many other things, but they, they come together with, uh, behind this idea regarding of their uh, differences. If there were, if there was not Bitcoin, maybe they, they would, I don't know, like uh, like we can see in politics in the U.S. Uh, today, fight uh, fight each other uh, based on their difference. But now they put this kind of difference aside, and they and they they, they share the same uh, interest, the same uh, uh, goal to see uh, to see Bitcoin again um, 
spread and uh, and and strengthen and i find find it also really uh, really interesting and it to me it's like a, a, a good side you know it, it shows the good side of uh, of people that they are uh, they are able to uh, come along come uh, come along together behind uh, one single idea regardless of their uh, dif specific differences uh, on on many other topics Absolutely, yeah. It's it's the only uh, community where a carnivore can sit next to a vegan, uh, and they don't eat themselves. Like they, they, exactly, they don't, they don't hate on each other too much. They they, they respect each other still. Yes, same thing with also a pol politic, uh, political thing because I've heard uh, that most of the time people tend to uh, um, uh, associate Bitcoin with, you know, the right uh, political spectrum. But uh, I've, he I've seen uh, the multiple also uh, people from, uh, from the left uh, in, in the US, but not only in the US, that also uh, embrace Bitcoin and uh, defend Bitcoin because, again, it's... Uh, It, when, when you when you dig, when you um, when you research it and when you uh, when you think about it uh, enough, uh, you 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 see that actually no, it it, it has some uh, some uh, left uh, values if I can uh, speak like that of uh, equality, uh, equity, uh, and, uh, and and um, and and freedom uh, and and many other other things that basically are uh, are also suited for uh, for. Uh, for a uh, different uh, political uh, spectrum. And so that's very, very interesting because we know that the uh, uh, recently uh, on the political side, uh, usually people, when they don't uh, see the, when they are, they don't endorse the same candidate, usually, especially in the US, but I've seen that in France also uh, recently with the election. Basically, it's like a, a war. But here you see that, again, people from different political views, they can uh, sit uh, together and uh, debate and talk uh, and also align behind uh, Bitcoin. And, and, and that's, uh, that's, that's fascinating. I, I love that a lot. Yeah, there, there's even like um, uh, Bitcoin for Harris movements, even though I think uh, in, in general, bit, uh, Trump seemed to be the more obvious candidate if you just... Uh, um, shoot for bitcoin like if if your only policy is uh bitcoin then i guess trump is uh the slightly better candidate uh but i'm not an american uh, yeah. i i really don't have a lot of clue of american politics uh i think uh there there just came out an an interview of trump with with joe rogan and i've not watched one single trump interview <laughs> so i have really not no clue not clue not a clue about this guy but i, I think i will watch the the joe rogan and trump interview because it's just like Joe Rogan is such an amazing conversationalist, I would say. Uh, and you really get to know a person when he's sitting with Joe Rogan. It's not like an interview on TV. Mm. Like it's, it's just like an, a, a conversation with two, two, two people. And I will watch that. And, and maybe then I have a little bit more of an opinion on, of Trump because I really don't have an opinion on Trump, which is an unpopular opinion if you don't have an opinion on Trump. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I, I I agree with you that uh, podcasts uh, usually are, are are more suited for uh, for really uh, deep dive conversation like long form podcast uh, like uh, like uh, Rogan but there is also um, another another podcast uh, that uh, the the name is uh, is flying over my head right now but Lex again, Friedman Lex Friedman exactly it's a, a long a long a long form podcast also like two or three hours that the guy really uh, goes down uh, the uh, deep into topics is he, he tries to stay um, quite uh, objective uh, on the on the topic and, and and not really lean in one side or the other uh, i've seen that for example for the for the, the the upcoming election he's trying to interview i think he did an interview with trump probably and he's also trying to interview to interview some people from uh, the opposite uh, side of the of the political spectrum to really have uh, a view on uh, on on either either side and i find it I find it again. I agree with you. Much more interesting and much more, um, uh, um, uh, yeah, interesting than uh, than short 
short uh, TV interviews where usually the, 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 the interviewer uh, wants to go fast and just uh, put some, uh, some tricky question uh, here and there. And most of the time, you don't really uh, learn a, a lot of things. Here, you can really uh, deep, deep dive on topic. And, uh, and that's, uh, that's a different way of, uh, of, uh, of interviewing. And I f think it's, uh, it's more uh, insightful. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Lex Friedman interviewed Donald Trump. Uh, I've, I've just seen it. Uh, I've not watched it actually also. Uh, but uh, apparently there's no interview with uh, Kamala Harris. I think she's not doing that many podcasts. Uh, that was a little fishy for, for me. I, I, I don't know. I, I didn't see any, any, any of the podcasts that I watched. She's not been on, <laughs> but maybe I just watched yeah. the, <laughs> the wrong podcast for that. Uh, but yeah, I think, uh, Joe Rogan said it even like she, he would be, um, he would great, uh, would love a, a conversation with her, uh, and, and also have, have a conversation with her. That would be actually great. Like if you have a, a long conversation, uh, with both parties on Joe Rogan, I think Joe Rogan would be the best guy to make even a debate on, on that. Obviously, I think he's probably, probably leaning towards Trump. Um, but he is um, too good uh, for not being like subject. Like he, I think is really good in, in just diving deep into topics and not getting like favoring one, one, one guy. But yeah, I'm uh, <laughs> just, just uh, my, my thoughts are we, really good. We'll see how it goes because actually it's going to be uh, soon. Like the, the election, I think is the, uh, the is November, uh, November, November five. So it's going to be, uh, it's going to be quick. <laughs> So we'll see, we'll see soon enough uh, how it goes. When this is out, the election is probably already over. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Uh, yeah, really cool. But let's, uh, let's come back to the Bitcoin topic. Um, how do you uh, envision actually Bitcoin being adopted in the future? We talked about like what's going on currently, what's going on in the past. How do you envision Bitcoin being adopted by individual corporations, countries? Uh, how do you see that in the future? Great question. So my uh, my my base uh, baseline base case for that is if nothing if nothing changes, which means uh, we keep on uh, having uh, uh, constant and perpetual government deficit that will tend, I guess, to be uh, higher and higher because basically uh, it's compound interest, but uh, against you, uh, uh, like uh, you you rack on debt. And then you have to pay interest on the debt, but to pay interest, you have to uh, get even more uh, debt. Uh, so people will um, uh, uh, start, will, will, will want to find uh, 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 an, an exit uh, out of this, uh, of this system, uh, some, some uh, faster than over, because uh, again, when, I, when I'm talking about uh, people that I know, friends uh, and uh, colleagues and whatnot that, uh, that, that are not uh, deep into uh, Bitcoin as I, as I might be, uh, for them, it's, 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 really, it's really far, it's really remote. I feel like we are still in like 2020 for some time, for sometimes because they, they, they are still saying like uh, Bitcoin is boiling the ocean, uh, it's, uh, it's bad for the environment, which has been debunked uh, scientifically speaking uh, multiple time uh, since then uh, it's like one of the most wrong uh, statements about uh, bitcoin that can uh, th that there can be uh, today uh, but again if if people don't um, don't research it and also if they listen to uh, uh, i would say misinformed uh, sources so may, um, uh, they, they might get some uh, so, some bad idea about that. But with that apart, uh, as I said, if we keep on uh, our current path of uh, increasing uh, deficits, increasing spending, uh, increasing debt, uh, people will uh, want to, we, they, they will see that something is, uh, I hope, at least I hope, they will see that something is uh, is off, something is odd. And they will want to 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 find a way out, you know. Uh, people, uh, usually people, at least uh, in the US, and I start to see that in France a bit, even even though we are uh, much less uh, into investing, but they they start to invest a bit in the stock market and uh, and this, this kind of thing, especially since 2020. But they so they start to get interested in that in this kind of thing, and they might. Uh, 
jump from that to uh, Bitcoin at some point when they see that uh, maybe investing in the stock market is more like a, a, a gamble and also it, it's it, it's barely keeping up with uh, inflation. I think it's like uh, Michael Saylor that, uh, that that said that. I, I didn't uh, check the, uh, I didn't do the, the, the exact research uh, on that, but he said that basically if you if you invest in the, in the S&P 500, you're just uh, trading water with uh, monetar monetary inflation. It's, it's like it's growing 7, 10% a year and uh, monetary inflation is, is uh, kind of the same. So uh, actually <laughs> it's, uh, that's that's kind of a, that's kind of an issue. So maybe uh, they, they will see uh, they will see uh, 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 hope in Bitcoin. I at least that, that that's how I see uh, I see it. But um, the 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 issue that we can uh, that we can have is that uh, people might uh, uh, take a lot of time to see this uh, this kind of uh, thing, and we we might have to wait. Uh, for them to 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 really uh, getting hurt a lot, I would I would say by by this uh, monetary inflation before they start to ask a question. It's like the the boiling frog, you know, you, you put a frog in a in a pot of water and you you increase the temperature uh, slightly slightly slightly. Uh, the, the the frog in the in the pot of water is is just uh, chilling. Uh, doesn't uh, doesn't notice that the water is uh, is uh, is increasing that the temperature is increasing and uh, and kind of ends up uh, boiled. So I hope we don't uh, end up in this situation that basically people end up uh, boiled by all of this uh, monetary inflation and all of this uh, kind of stuff before they discover Bitcoin. I partnered up with Coin Vigilante. This is the most beautiful Bitcoin timepiece that I ever saw created by anyone. Look at that beauty. I love it so much. Coin Vigilante made a perfect Bitcoin watch. That's the perfect, subtle, elegant way to go out there and show that you are a Bitcoiner. And that watch brand is Bitcoin only. And Coin Vigilante just dropped a completely new and amazing Genesis edition of their watch collections. You have the date of the first ever mined Bitcoin block in there and of course also the block height and which epoch we are currently in. I love the level of detail they put in in this masterpiece and make sure to check out those amazing Coin Vigilante timepieces down in the descriptions. I love those watches so so much. If you watch or listen to my podcast on a regular basis I guess you already bought some Bitcoin. And now the most important step is is to keep the Bitcoin. Keep them secure in a hardware wallet. My personal recommendation for hardware wallet is the Bitbox. It's super secure. It's simple to set up. It's also a perfect gift for a friend who has still the Bitcoin on an exchange. And you can get a 5% discount with the code ROBIN at the checkout. Visit bitbox.swiss ROBIN to get your Bitbox. And the next step is to really level up your sovereignty as an individual. You have to have the most secure self-custody setup. You have to secure your own devices. You have to protect your privacy. You have to set up an inheritance plan. And depending on where you live, you even want to have a plan B, a citizenship where you can move in case something goes really, really wrong. And through all those steps, the Bitcoin way is guiding you through step by step. And if you visit the bitcoinway.com slash partners slash Robin, you even get a 30 minute free call to find out how you can level up your sovereignty. I have uh, an interesting chart here um, for the people that are just listening to this. Um, I basically pulled up a chart where you can see the US money supply M2 and the S&P 500 index, which is super interesting because they kind of track each other. Of course, it's not a perfect correlation. And right now the index is a little bit above uh, what the US, uh, uh, US uh, money supplies, but there's a super a big correlation between those yeah. two uh, and it's it's amazing to see obviously people also then go here again uh, then uh go and and say like oh yeah the same is true for bitcoin yeah to a certain extent 
obviously, as you also said in your base case, when money is printed, assets go up, money goes down. So <laughs> that's assets, a very assets simple Assets that are limited in supply and that people want or that people need, uh, yes, they, 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 go up in, uh, in, uh, they go up in price. That's why we see um, uh, real estate going up in price, stocks going up in price. In France, for, in, in France, for example, uh, people are much more uh, invested in, uh, in, in real estate than they might be in the stock market, uh, for example. Uh, so uh, so I, I, can see, I can see that. And the, the, the nice thing with, uh, with Bitcoin, and that's, that's something that I, I, I find really powerful also is that um, basically on, a, on an individual basis it has no maintenance, maintenance cost because for example real estate you have to put at I don't know like 10% a year uh, uh, to pay uh, all of the things that you need to repair taxes whatever uh, you have it also consume takes time to, to, to handle of the, all of that uh, the stock market there is a little bit of uh, of um, of cost because you you have the um, the fees and, uh, and and stuff like that but with bitcoin uh, you don't have all of that and the most um, the most powerful thing to me is that uh, you can take it with you and uh, go anywhere you want, uh, like in 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 an instant, basically. Whereas your, uh, your your real estate or your stock, it's much more complicated if you need to leave to uh, to take it with you. Yeah, and, and and it's it's so great. Uh, I think I love the side priced in Bitcoin, as you mentioned it. Uh, when you start pricing pe- uh, things in Bitcoin, and there you can clearly see uh, like uh, the the price in Bitcoin, uh, what it was. Yes. Uh, I think like the obviously like two thousand twelve, like forty thousand Bitcoin. Obviously, uh, that's uh, that's quite early. Uh, but even if you go back to twenty twenty. Uh, there, let's say January 2020, a house, new house price, an average house price in America was 45 Bitcoin. Uh, and now we're down to six Bitcoin. So the, the house prices are completely crashing. In, <laughs> and in we, Bitcoin, yes. Because if you, comp- Bitcoin, if, you, yeah. if you, if you pull up the same uh, chart in uh, US dollar, in euro, or whatever currency uh, you, 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 you are using, uh, the, the graph will be uh, on the, on the opposite side. It will go, it will go up. So that's really, uh, that, Abs- that's really ab- interesting. Absolutely. And then uh, also just to, to show you quickly, um, you also can see the equity markets. So yeah. we talked before about the S&P 500 uh, and oh, let's, let's, let's concentrate on that side really quickly. There is everything red. <laughs> everything is going down against Bitcoin in the equity market. It's so fascinating. For Again, for those people that are just listening, uh, there's basically US dollar, uh, crude oil, gold, S&P 500, uh, the real estate market, uh, all uh, to uh, summarize on one page. And on a daily, on a weekly, on a monthly, on a year to date, on a one year chart, on three years chart, five years charts, and everything is red right now. So everything is going down against Bitcoin, uh, no matter what you're looking at. And that's really, really uh, interesting to see. And, and re- I think a powerful sign for uh, the, the, the Bitcoiners, because you are just holding the best asset ever and everything else is going down, was going down and will go down in the, in the future. Which is, which is also a, a good thing because basically if you, if you, if we go from to, to, to first principle, when you, so when you, when you work and you get your salary, for example, at the end of the month and you, you are lucky enough to uh, manage your budget uh, wisely and basically have uh, excess money. You don't, you don't really want to use this money uh, right now, or you don't have to use this money right now. You want to save it for uh, uh, buying a house later or going on vacation later. So the, the nice thing with Bitcoin is that you don't have to overthink it. You just, okay, take your, I don't know, maybe I save 10%, 15%. Okay, I take my 15%. I put them into uh, Bitcoin. And when I want to buy uh, something later down the road, 
So it's, it might not be true today because there is a lot of volatility. So if I want to buy something three months from now, maybe it's not the, the, the best idea to put it into Bitcoin. But conceptually speaking, uh, I, I just save it so in, into a, a good savings vehicle, which is Bitcoin. And then later down the road, when I want to buy a house, a car, go on a holiday with my family, I just take this uh, saved uh, capital and I can uh, buy it and, and I can buy things with it. And it didn't decrease in, pur in purchasing power, which is not the case today if you just take your, uh, your uh, saving and put them on your uh, bank account or even on a regulated uh, savings account that might yield 2 or 3%. Uh, you end up, as we saw with, uh, with, the, with the charts you, you put, you end up basically losing uh, pur purchasing power because, uh, uh, because of monetary inflation and uh, increases in, uh, in prices. And this, again, we, we also talk about incentive. This incentivizes people to, uh, to take uh, some extra risk with their, uh, with their savings because basically they, they now they invest it in the stock market. The stock market, the stock market is big, has become the, 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 the savings vehicle of, uh, of a lot of people, which is not his its first uh, purpose you know you invest in the stock market because uh, you invest in a company you think this company will do well in the future uh, you also you, you invest in a company because you like the product because there are a, a thousand reasons to invest in a company but today what most people do they just take their uh, savings and automatically they put them in the stock market because they they are they think like or they feel like yeah okay uh, uh, it's gonna at least uh, save my uh, purchasing power which basically uh, we are using a tool for the we for the not the wrong purpose but a, a different purpose that, than it was uh, built for in the in the first place so that's uh, that's that kind of that can have some uh, some uh, different uh, effect uh, down the road that we might not know uh, today for example uh, one that come uh, in the top of my mind but I might be wrong on that but uh, is uh, basically um, uh, since we, we put money in an in a index fund and the index basically will redistribute the, the money uh, in, the, in the different company, uh, for example, in the S&P 500, you have the, the, the top companies that will get uh, a lot of money uh, basically from all of this uh, pass passive flow, even though maybe these might not be uh, the, the, the best company in the whole stock market. And also this... Um, you, you you end up with with some uh, monopolies that are formed and that are that can be hard to uh, to overcome uh, because basically these uh, top companies in the stock market uh, they they attract a lot of capital and so some other uh, newcomer uh, company uh, like uh, Outsander they can't they they might not get the, the, the financing that they need to uh, propose uh, a, a new solution that might be uh, cheaper, better, uh, or whatever. And so you kind of end up in a, in, in a gridlock, you know, uh, uh, things don't really move uh, anymore because uh, the, the, the top companies stay at the top and the, the little company at the bottom, they can't really rise because they don't get the financing. I don't know. That's just a, a train of thought that I had. It's a, it's a true train of thought. Um, I, w one thing before we, we go down that road, I, I want to just add, um, you, you said something about gambling and I think stock market investing, like if you invest in a company that you don't own, uh, and you didn't do any research in that company, that's just gambling. Like you, you, you're just hoping to make money with that. That's gambling. You can go in a casino and then it's interesting. Uh, when you uh, then go ahead and buy an ETF, what is an ETF? ETF is just like a lot of companies uh, included in, in one thing. Obviously, there can be Bitcoin ETFs and other things, but usually like the Bitcoin, uh, like uh, like a stock uh, ETFs or something like that. Uh, that is just uh, bundled gambling. Like the, <laughs> you, you don't know what companies are there, what, what are they doing? You're just hoping that someone is making a good decision on investing in, in that company. So it's all just like a bundled uh, 
gambling thing and that that's that's not that's not what saving and, is and you don't know if you are doing a, a good investment again because we are talking about investment in the stock market you might buy uh, basically a company that are overvalued for example uh, or uh, or that are yeah too, too expensive for what they actually uh, bring in uh, revenue in cash or for their uh, uh, future earnings perspective but since again you don't really um, Uh, do any 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 research and you just automatically uh, invest uh, in this company uh, uh, regularly you don't really uh, you don't really know that you might be investing in some overvalued company uh, or uh, or some uh, yeah, or some company that might end up uh, uh, not uh, not giving you uh, a good return on capital in uh, in uh, in a reasonable um, time frame And that's why MicroStrategy outperformed every single S&P 500 stock since they adopted the Bitcoin standard. Like that's the single reason for, 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 for that. They don't have an amazing business model that uh, is super exciting with, with AI or whatever. I mean, they're doing great uh, uh, business in, in general, but it's not like an NVIDIA. Yeah, uh, they, they are not narrative. revolutionizing uh, their, uh, their industry. It's like, I think it's like a business intelligence company. They are doing software, like, like a, a, a lot of other companies in the world. But uh, yeah, they have this edge against uh, all of the other companies. So I think pe people more and more get it that we need Bitcoin and, and we don't need like uh, stock gambling or real estate houses with 30 year mortgages uh, as a savings vehicle. Uh, I think that gets clearer and clearer with every day. Um, what then also comes to my mind when we have all those companies and they get feeded with the fiat money printer, that that creates a lot of zombie companies that are just alive because yeah, they benefit from the uh, fiat money printer. What was your thoughts around that? No, that, that's true. Uh, they, 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 I mean, we, we, we kind of saw that during the, the, the COVID, uh, the COVID period. Uh, so again, there are some pros and some cons about that, but some company, I don't, I don't know if most company or what, but some company at least, they, they survived, uh, during the, the COVID period because of some, uh, stimulus and some other things like that. Uh, and they, whereas, uh, in, in a, in a, a normal environment, I would say, uh, this company that might not be profitable, they would just have uh, ceased to exist. And so the, the, the capital that was um, flowing to this company and that was basically at the end of the day uh, uh, um, wasted. Because if you invest in a company that uh, is not uh, uh, producing uh, something of, of value or uh, valuable enough for the for the money you you, you put in basically the, the the company is burning is burning money uh, so you so it's a, it's a destruction of capital um, and and this money could have been better allocated maybe elsewhere and also the people that were working in these companies uh, might have been uh, better again allocated in a way uh, working in some other companies But I guess also, I get also the, the, the over part of the uh, of the of the debate, which is yes, but this was a crisis. Uh, if people were were left out of uh, of a job at this time, uh, they would have been uh, extra um, vulnerable, and also we didn't really know how long the the crisis was gonna last and whatnot. So I get both sides of the argument, but uh, an even uh, more more interesting uh, argument based on that is also uh, again linked maybe to uh, uh, ETFs and investing as a saving vehicle today. Is that people, since they just funnel money into uh, the stock market, they might uh, invest. Uh, without knowing it again because they just do it automatically in some uh, zombie company that just stay alive because they get uh, a, a new uh, injected capital regularly uh, through the stock market because the people are just basically uh, uh, throw, throwing money everywhere basically I, I'm just buying everything in, instead of really picking my companies so if I'm buying everything I'm also buying some uh, some uh, zombie company or some company that are uh, not uh, productive enough and that are not 
uh, and, and, and that end up uh, destroying capital. I think I saw a statistic about that. Again, uh, I, I didn't double check that. Uh, uh, it's been it's been a while, but uh, in the S and P five hundred, um, I like there is there was only uh, a, a small part of the five hundred uh, something companies listed in the index that were actually uh, earning money or not, not earning money, but. Uh, uh, that that had a, a positive return on capital. Uh, most of the uh, most of the I, I don't know maybe it's like uh, uh, 20, 80, 20, I don't know. But um, most of the companies were actually uh, um, uh, destroying capital in a way they they were not um, uh, they, they were they, they they did not have a, a positive return and only the like uh, top companies had a positive return. But since they, they, these companies were so big, they, they were uh, pulling the whole index uh, up. But uh, if you really uh, dove into the, the detail, you could see that uh, most of the companies in the, in the index uh, were actually uh, burning capital. So, uh, so that's also an, an interesting thing is like, uh, yeah, okay, maybe uh, if we invest all of this money in, in the index, uh, like uh, blindly, we are also uh, making some unprofitable company, or maybe not unprofitable, but uh, uh, companies that uh, we, we are putting money in companies, uh, whereas we could put this, this same money in, in companies that would be more, uh, that would have a, a better return on capital and would use basically this capital be, uh, better to, uh, to uh, improve uh, society, uh, build innovation or, or whatnot. But uh, but we just, uh, yeah, we just spray the money around, and so uh, these companies stay on living maybe longer than they should. Uh, they should have. Yeah, in, in, in general, uh, I just researched if I can find an exact statistic. I think it's like thirty percent of the companies, or even less than that, uh, actually make a positive return of an investment uh, for the investors in the S and P five hundred. Obviously, uh, S and P five hundred as uh, performance is not that great. <laughs> uh, like the golden era of the S and P 500 is kind of over. Uh, and obviously then, uh, if, if the <laughs> return of investment is like barely positive, then obviously there are some, uh, very negative companies and then some very positive companies also. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's just interesting to look at, uh, those, kind of developments that, that, that we live through. Um, wh one thing that I want to also get into because we touched on it a little bit, uh, but I think uh, we should get a little bit into that. Um, the thing that the ECP is touching on with wealth distribution, um, which is interesting that uh, earlier Bitcoiners obviously um, uh, benefit from being early in Bitcoin which is, I think, an extreme fair thing because of a lot of reasons. But what are, you, what are your thoughts uh, on that argument <laughs> that people should, should get, get, get early into Bitcoin, obviously? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I find this argument kind of uh, silly in a way because basically that's, uh, yeah, that, that's the basis of any uh, investment. Uh, the, 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 those, those that get in early uh, have... Uh, or benefit, I mean, um, uh, financially speaking, than, than those that get in uh, that get in late. I, I don't know, for example, uh, if we talk about Amazon, uh, the, those that invested in Amazon uh, in the early uh, 2000 uh, and and that uh, kept on uh, holding through uh, the dot-com bubble and everything uh, after that, and that now uh, still have the, the, the stock, yes, they made a, a huge return on that. Uh, but I don't see the uh, European Central Bank uh, writing a paper on uh, early adopters of uh, of uh, Amazon or Apple or Tesla or whatever else company, you know. So to me, it's like it's it's kind of silly this uh, this argument, and the 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 the, the, the yeah the the, the 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 even more silly part is like the the, the conclusion basically because the conclusion is. Uh, uh, you, you should, uh, I mean, basically, uh, I'm paraphrasing, but they should be taxed uh, heavily uh, for, for, uh, for that. Uh, yeah, a, a, an alternative is also uh, for uh, people that don't hold Bitcoin today, 
that again uh, gets some in case it uh, catches on you know uh, uh, so uh, so that f- from one single uh, uh, starting point you you can get to uh, basically you, you you get to the conclusion that you want and i feel like uh, uh, that 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 that's what they they are trying to do they they have they are already uh, preconceived conclusion that they want to uh, to uh, come to you know basically their conclusion is uh, bitcoin is bad uh, it should be banned uh, it's going to be the end of the world and whatever whatever and uh, from that they just uh, build their arguments and their paper based on that but basically the the the, the end uh, the, the end conclusion uh, never changed for them uh, it's just that every dif- every single paper they they they, they build a different uh, arguments uh, as i said earlier it was uh, bitcoin is a speculative bubble uh, then uh, bitcoin is dead because uh, the paper was uh, published uh, uh, i don't know in uh, in like uh, 2022 or whatever when it was the bear market now uh, that it's uh, starting to get uh, traction a bit more they 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 get a, a, another uh, another uh, angle of attack another argument again against it or at least they try so um, but the if we if we think again about uh, if we think about that um and and we st- we take a, a step uh, a step back uh, the um, like that to me that they, that's not their uh, their mission their mandate mandates their uh, i mean it's like a public uh, organization that is paid with taxpayer money so european taxpayer money uh, my money your money everyone that that lives in the eu and basically they uh, use their time to write a, a, a shitty paper in a way because uh, I'm not saying shitty because uh, I I'm, I don't agree with their uh, with their view but it's just that the arguments are really bad uh, and the, the the paper is poorly written I didn't read it from uh, from start to finish but I've read multiple um, I, I've read some some part of it and and also multiple. Um, analysis of the of the paper and the 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 the, the, the conclusion is the same basically that they, they, they are uh, they, the, the arguments are really poor uh, not well researched and uh, are just made so that they can uh, defend their uh, their own uh, conclusion that uh, like their uh, their personal conclusion that they want to they, they want to put out it's not it's not like a scientific paper you know that is objective and that that goes from we we, we don't have any uh, uh, per, uh, preconceived uh, view on that and we will uh, do some research and uh, and come to a, to a conclusion it's the other way around they have a conclusion they want to share or they want to put into the world and they build their paper from that so uh, yeah, again, uh, as I was saying, to me, it's not their it's it's not their mission. They have some uh, some better things to do with uh, our money, and uh, and and that's crazy. And uh, and again, they they write it about Bitcoin, but they could write a similar thing about any other basically uh, investment. You know, uh, that that that's silly. Just like mindless. Um... European central banks, soldiers, <laughs> try, trying to make up some some arguments in, in there. And it's also, um, I think, I've spoken with a lot of Bitcoiners and also a lot of uh, early Bitcoiners. Um, most of them lost their Bitcoin along the way. Most of them sold their Bitcoin along the way. And those few people who actually stomached the such a big volatility and had a knowledge about the great technology, uh, not losing in Margox, uh, having a great self custody setup, not losing it, everything like that. And additionally to do that, had the foresight where Bitcoin is actually going. They deserve that. <laughs> like if if someone bought a, a thousand Bitcoin uh, and stomached the volatility. I uh, didn't uh, screw up the um, the technology uh, around it. I lost it, not uh, did not sell it, uh, even though they saw their net worth skyrocketing. They one hundred percent deserve it, and they should be hilariously rich. They they did something that 
almost nobody was even thinking about and that's that, that's how i think about it like it's obviously it's like <laughs> hard to stop and you're like oh he bought bitcoin for like one euro and i have to buy it for like sixty thousand euros that's not fair but that's a very very stupid <laughs> perspective on that because there's a lot of work that has to be done for in order to do that yeah that that's that's disincentivizing uh, basically investment uh, risk taking and uh, in a way, uh, entrepreneurship uh, a, a bit uh, as well, uh, and and also it's uh, 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 um, a, a view, a mindset that is a bit weird, basically because okay, you you uh, you took some risk, or you or, or even if it's not risk, it's just uh, luck. Uh, okay, you you got lucky, uh, so now uh, give us uh, part of your uh, of your earning, and I guess. Uh, huge part of the of the earnings uh, because we will know we will know better than you uh, what to do with uh, with this money yes but uh, no <laughs> let me uh, I, I doubt i doubt that you know that, that that's funny because we were talking about the, again the, the the budget that is being voted in france uh, currently and that the same thing in uh, in in many countries and in I, I don't know of any single country, at least on the top of my mind, that uh, has a well balanced budget. You know that is not in a, basically in debt in deficit. So you you have this this uh, side of things like basically governments and uh, central entities are uh, running deficit, are in debt, and so now they are uh, uh, trying to uh, get uh, excited like oh. Uh, the deficit is uh, is uh, is huge. Uh, maybe we should uh, raise taxes and uh, and and whatnot. And on the other side of things, they they say, "Oh, uh, you earn some money. Uh, give us the money. We will know better what to do with that." Uh, <laughs> it doesn't uh, doesn't add up, you know. <laughs> so that's, that's kind of crazy. That's a, it's an amazing view. It's a, a, I love how you look at that. Really cool. Um, perfect. One last thing that I want to get into is you said, uh, there's a link between health and Bitcoin. What is yeah. that? So, um, I, I'm thinking about it because, uh, I'm now, I'm now working in a, in a healthcare, uh, preventive healthcare, uh, uh, startup. And the, the the goal of the of the company is to um, is to uh, increase your your um, your uh, your time uh, your uh, your health span, but in good health, you know. And that made me think also about uh, Bitcoin and a link with Bitcoin, because basically, when you huddle Bitcoin, you have a long time uh, a long time preference. You you don't want to uh, not know uh, spend your Bitcoin in two days uh, or or whatnot. You want to hold it for. Uh, for future use and maybe give it to your uh, your future generation and that made me think about that because when you when you have uh, when you have bitcoin and when you are you you uh, you you adhere to the bitcoin also uh, mindset and uh, and uh, and culture in a way uh, the um, this uh, like Taking good care of your health is really uh, is really uh, important and, and and makes sense. And so that just made me think about that uh, quickly because uh, before that I was working for, uh, for in the in the in the in the crypto industry and um, and uh, I made this this jump for uh, for this reason because uh, also because I'm really interested in, uh, in in healthcare and when you when you start to take um, to take care of your health, uh, you you start to um, basically uh, view your uh, basically you, you your Bitcoin kind of gets uh, more uh, valuable to you because you know that you might be able to use them in a, in a, in a um, longer uh, longer time horizon. If I know that I, for example, if I know that I uh, that I'm gonna die in uh, in uh, in five weeks. Uh, I don't have the same uh, the same incentive, you know, regarding my Bitcoin and regarding saving than uh, if I work in uh, in if if I uh, if I die in uh, in uh, 50 years. So basically, uh, taking good care of your health is really is also important uh, um, uh, to to uh, to use your uh, your money later than down the road. And what made me think about that is that uh, in uh, in Bitcoin, where since we we 
we we come from a, a short uh, time preference to uh, basically it increase your uh, your uh, your time uh, your time preference uh, getting involved in, in involved in, in, in bitcoin uh, you kind of, you start to get uh, to to get more interested in this kind of uh, topics you know health uh, basically improving your health and uh, and living uh, living longer so that's uh, that was just uh, uh, a quick thought that i had I love that, but uh, it, it's really, it, I think it's, it, it speaks a lot to what Bitcoin can do uh, for society when we uh, think long term and what we uh, think uh, about Bitcoin in general. Um, w one last thing, why is Bitcoin special to you? Huh, great question. Um, so from two uh two, I, i will say two two, two things about that the, the the first thing is that uh I, i've always been uh like uh, uh um I, i i've always been a saver you know like uh, sa saving money trying to earn more that i that i uh, that i uh, spend and also i don't really buy uh, crazy uh, shit uh, every week because that's not really uh, my uh, my thing i don't uh, Uh, it doesn't bring me, me joy. That's not who I am. So I've always been uh, a saver. And as we mentioned uh, earlier, Bitcoin is kind of uh, the, the perfect uh, saving uh, technology. And also, um, uh, uh, so I'm, I'm working in, uh, I'm, I'm an engineer by, uh, by trade. So I, I have an engineering degree. So I'm really interested in everything uh, technology. And Bitcoin uh, is, to me, Uh, a great uh, inv invention or uh, discovery because technologically speaking uh, it's uh, simple and i like i like a simple thing uh, it's simple compared to uh, you might some other cryptocurrencies or some other uh, system it's uh, it's simple it works it's solid it's robust And it's really uh, powerful because, again, as we mentioned, also through uh, different incentives, uh, it allows you, uh, it allows a, a lot of different things. Uh, so we mentioned mining, we mentioned uh, radio, uh, increased time preference and, and all of these things. And th so that's basically uh, the, the, the two things that, uh, that, uh, that are important for me. Uh, in uh, in bitcoin and that made me uh, interested in that really cool i love it a lot uh really cool uh one question that every one of my um guests get is what can we learn from you besides bitcoin great question um so i just uh, i guess i just uh, <laughs> teased a bit about that uh, in my in my previous question uh, answer but uh, as i said i'm Uh, I'm really um, into um, into optimization uh, saving. So saving to me is like optimization. You have a, a, a certain amount of money and you want to uh, you want to to do the most with uh, with these uh, resources. So I'm really into uh, into optimization. So that goes through finance and not only that. Uh, for example, I like I love uh, doing uh, my own uh, repairs in my uh, in my apartments. You know, if there is something that is broken, I'm not gonna call someone to uh, fix it. I will uh, I will look up look up on the internet. Okay, how do how do you do that? And now with uh, open uh, with ChatGPT and whatnot, it's even easier to learn uh, something and. Again, I, I love also learning new uh, learning new topics, learning new things, uh, basically broadening my uh, my my worldview. Uh, because uh, I have a feeling that if you when when you stop when you stop learning things, basically uh, you're dead. You know, uh, the, the the one of the goal of life is to continue also learning continuously to improve improve your life and improve the life of others. So that's also something that I'm really uh, interested about, uh, continuous learning and discovery. And again, that's also why uh, I'm really interested into Bitcoin, because uh, when you start to uh, dive into the topic, uh, you learn uh, a lot of things on, on, on very different topics. Absolutely. If you, if you stop learning, if you stop progressing, uh, you are decreasing, you are you're moving back uh, basically in, in, in some sense. Uh, really, really cool. I love that a lot. Um, we have an interview in the podcast where the previous guest is asking a question for the next guest without knowing who the next guest actually is. And your question from the previous guest is what's 
what central bank will be the first one to adopt uh, Bitcoin or buy some Bitcoin? Very good question. Uh, on the top of my head, I would say uh, I would say Switzerland. I would say I would say Switzerland. Uh, obviously, uh, not talking about El Salvador because uh, I feel. I mean, I don't know if they really have a, a central bank, but they are. No, no, they, they don't have. Uh, um, they don't have a currency. Uh, they probably have a national bank or something like yeah. that. Uh, but uh, they they cannot print their own money. Uh, that uh, and that's kind of what he he meant with 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 that. So ah, okay, Swiss, Swiss franc would be amazing. I yeah. I think Swiss, and I will I I, I will get uh, I, I will get some some pointer to that. Again, maybe I will be uh, totally wrong. We'll see in the future. But what what make me think about Switzerland is that um, so first of all, uh, Swiss is like uh, Switzerland is a, is a, is kind of a decentralized country. Uh, you have multiple cantons. It's like it's kind of a small country also. So it's not like in the US where uh, when you want to have this kind of change, uh, it might take uh, longer. Um, uh, if I remember, if I if I remember correctly, I think that's one of the last country that was on um, on a gold standard. I think they they left they they, they depegged their currency from gold in the late 1990s, early 2000s, if I remember correctly. Um, and also, uh, so I you 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 see that uh, in in Switzerland they are really uh, I would say agnostic about Bitcoin. Uh, contrary to some other uh, European countries where basically uh, Bitcoin, they, they don't say no to Bitcoin. You know, there is a lot, there are a lot of uh, companies uh, that are based in Switzerland that are uh, Bitcoin company. For example, there is a, a Relay that is a, a good company that is based there and they, they can basically uh, uh, put some Bitcoin in their treasury. They can uh, uh, bootstrap a company uh, using Bitcoin. Whereas, for example, I take France as a, as a as a comparison. In France, if you want to start a company, you must have a bank account, and uh, you can't just come and say, "Okay, I have ten thousand dollars in Bitcoin. Uh, that's the starting capital of my company, and uh, go for there, go from there." No, in Switzerland, you can. It's really um, it's much more easier to do that. And my last point is that. Um, uh, I think the Swiss uh, National Bank, uh, the, the Swiss Central Bank, uh, bought some uh, micro strategy uh, stocks uh, recently, a couple of months ago, I think, uh, in their uh, um, yeah, in, in their in their uh, central bank, like as part of their assets. Uh, and I guess they didn't buy buy uh, micro strategy. Uh, just because uh, there, there might be a reason behind that. And I think the reason is to get exposed to Bitcoin. So maybe they don't want to buy Bitcoin right now for some reason. Maybe it's like some uh, political reason, some regulatory reason or whatnot. But uh, at least uh, at least they are interested in that. So that's that's uh, that would be my answer. We'll see in the future if I'm uh, right or not. <laughs> They they actually did. Uh, it's it's amazing that they they're doing it. I, I love that a lot. Really really cool. Perfect. Then yeah, thank you so much, uh, Alex, for being on the show. Uh, before I let you go, where can people find you? Ask your questions. DM you. Uh, Twitter, I guess, would be the Twitter X now. Would be the best thing. Perfect. Then I will link that down in the description. Thank you so much for being on. Also, thank you so much for everyone that is watching and listening, uh, for joining us today. As always, I'll be back tomorrow with another episode. Bye bye.